Oh, what this lie. This is so cute. Right? Isn't it cute? Yeah. It's very, that's what women say to my penis. All right. Let's go right into it. Uh, Natasha, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for I'm doing, doing it. well. I, I figured out that English. I'm supposed to <laughs> do better at English. Because well, hi, this is The Up and Up. I have Natasha Pearl Hansen here. She's an amazing comedian, actor, and entrepreneur. And I didn't just read that before I did <laughs> start this podcast. <laughs> You're like creeping on Instagram. You're yeah, like, what else is she up to? Oh my gosh! Can, what questions can I ask? You? You're pretty. You're pretty good shape. How mm -hmm. do you stay in good shape and do stand up? Because if people and don't drink. know, exactly, <laughs> that's the problem. At least for me, and I love doing stand up, and I'm never gonna stop it. But it does all my worst habits. A except, lot of the bad ones. porn mm -hmm. comes from stand up. And the porn them. you need to offset yeah, the stand up because yeah, I mean, you can't so just use stress. your brain all the time. You gotta <laughs> release that energy somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, stand up for sure, especially because I do like to drink. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't really. It's weird because I like to live a healthy, balanced life. Yeah, yeah same. But balance is like a fake term. Yeah, yeah. balance I think is what I call cocaine. Like, yeah, the Karens of the world invented that. Like, gotta be balanced. Like, what does that even mean? Life isn't balanced. Like, we're spinning on a fucking planet. Like, we can't. Uh, yeah. you what know? does any of this mean? So, I don't like to give myself restrictions. Mm. If I, on a certain day, was like, I don't. It, I wasn't planning to drink, but somebody's going out, and I, yeah, I want to have a beer with them. You know that, like. I, I, I do that, but I, I also work out a lot, and I try to I, I can tell. offset you, it. You know, I don't do something for escapism. Mm. More so if I want to go have a beer, it's because somebody I like asked me to, mm. and I'm trying to be social. That's you know, super profound. I'm, That's Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I think instead of being like, oh, I'm having a terrible day, I'm going to go get drunk. You know? I'm, but, on the, I'm on the same page. Yeah. Where I'm at with drugs now, because I have tried to cut them out of my life, Yeah. the balance for me is... It's usually special occasions or to bond with friends. Like all, yeah. like all my cousins love to smoke. And here's the thing. I'm over the way they like to get high. I'm a little over it. Like I've been in pothead since I was like a freshman in high school. Yeah. I've, I've been high most of my life. I'm over it. But it's crazy because when I meet up with my cousins, they're like, bro, you want to smoke a blunt? I'm like, yeah, smoke one. Then you trying to smoke another one? Yeah. Then you trying to smoke another one? Yeah. And then you try to smoke another one. And <laughs> they just Yeah, bro. <laughs> and then you keep going. Yeah. And this and I think that's fine because now mm. I limit that to maybe like once every three months I get that high with them. I eat an edible here and there. But mm -hmm. other than that, I'm pretty like if I smoke like when I smoke it's a little bit to write. I like to get a little high. Sure. Make get some tea. And mm -hmm. then I start I'll get in my little comedy notebook and I get going. Or if I'm like in a weird, like weird mental place. I'll get like I do a little shrooms. That's my then, jam. Is that your drug? Yeah, that's my drug. You are so fucking what? I love mushrooms. Big mushrooms. Me too. Uh -huh. Me too. I, I, do you know that apparently in China, I think so, overseas, I'm pretty sure it's China. The uh, testing in on mental health and it has a lot of benefits for the yeah. mental health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever try them. I was scared to try them um, until my 30s, mm -hmm. until my early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up doing them with uh, a couple couple friends mm -hmm. in Big Bear, mm -hmm. but me and a few other friends were there without a partner, and they had kids there. Mm -hmm. They were asleep upstairs. So the first time I did mushrooms was in a cabin in the woods with kids asleep upstairs. It was like an eight bedroom cabin. <laughs> and, uh, How old were you, if I may ask? I was thirty three. Oh wow! And I was like, oh, I get it now. Um, I found them to be so positive feeling, mm -hmm. and I just had like the best conversations with people I already liked. Mm. And I was like, Good. I was literally like, if everybody was on mushrooms, I don't think we'd have any problems. I, uh, yeah, I'm a firm believer, believer of that. Not too much of that. No, I believe that. Like, have you ever bit. done acid? No. You should do acid. To me, so acid is just like shrooms, but for like 12 hours. It's like really strong <laughs> shrooms for a long, but here's the thing. The epiphany I have every single time I do acid is I have a couple of epiphanies. One, we should love everyone. Yeah. It just makes it makes no sense to love everyone. Not yeah. to love everyone. Two, I go, who the fuck is running society? 
Because then you, then I naturally go, because I go, you should love everyone. Then the second thing I go is, I'm like, oh, racism is dumb. Yeah. Sexism is dumb. Yeah. Xenophobia is dumb. And then it hits me. I go, oh, this is all a plot to keep us divided while the people at top take all the money out the back door. This is the most acid <laughs> shit I've like- ever said in my life. But I just go, <laughs> oh, I get it. You know how to play this, right? I do. All right. Well, I'll go first. Me first? Or Ooh, you first? first? No, you first. Me first? Yeah. All right. You know, normally Going I'm like, edge right away. Okay, all right. Don't, so don't do that. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Yeah, don't tell me what to do. All right? I don't listen to <laughs> white women. <laughs> That's the clip. <laughs> there That's it is. the clip. There it is. <laughs> Boom. All Boom. right. Let's get, to, let's, get to the, let's get to the questions, miss. Sure. You ready? Yeah. Word on the block is you're black. Is yeah. this true? Yeah, I am. No, but are you? Yeah. You're black. Um, my, how black? So my mom is <laughs> black, great. Dominican, and Sicilian. Holy shit. So my grandfather. Even the white part is black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So my grandpa is black. Um, and that both my grandpas were. So my, my grandma that was married to him remarried another black man. So, uh, so, so I'll do it again. So your grandma. My grandma, who, my, who, who was married to my black, black grandpa. Okay. They had two kids, so my mom and her brother. Then they got divorced, and then she married another black man. Oh, she had a thing, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. So she, so I, I mean, have like another side of my black family, but they're all. not blood. But then I have my black, black family, family that's all here. I mean, if your grandma's Chicago. still alive, tell her, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here, baby. You know, I'm looking for love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. You know, she's amazing. Yeah. She's 80 years old. That's what I need in my life. I just talk, let's, get to, let's get to the real shit. You have a business where you try to break up happy couples. <laughs> Oh, man, it's a celebration of what life choice you have to make. Um, okay, I'm listening. So the breakup registry is not meant to like break up happy couples, but it's meant to kind of embrace your community and your support system when you do go through a breakup. Mm, it's um, beautiful. And it's really basic right now. It's just like a registry. So you can register like a wedding registry. But I'm I'm fundraising right now, which has been crazy, and bringing on a partner and expanding. Why do you think the dating market is so tough right now? I mean, you've been in a relationship for a little bit, but if you had a opinion on it, why do you think it's so tough? Um, a couple of things, because people actually send me a lot of stuff, so I've been able to gather a lot of data, obviously, because this company. Um, first, when I went through my breakup with my ex fiance, it was at the start of 2020. So I had this idea Beginning already. Beginning of the pandemic? Right before it. Right before it. Okay. Um, so when the pandemic hit, my first thought was, if I don't make this, a lot of people are going to break up during the pandemic. Mm. Like, because they're going to be locked down together and oh, yeah. some real shit's going to come out. And I was right. So <laughs> um, it killed my relationship for it, sure. Yeah, it killed a lot of people's relationships. But, you know, there's two things that I'm kind of noticing. Like, one, here, I'll move it over here so you can see. Um, one, so nice. um, I think people were faced with their inner demons mm. and had to really show who they were without mm. the nine to five exit to mm. a job. Uh-huh. People working jobs and being in different places I than agree. each other is a huge reason why a lot of marriages lasted as long as really? they did. I agree. A hundred percent. They didn't have to be around each other the majority of the day. Yeah. You know, yes. uh, do you think that's a bad thing though? Like, I uh, don't, neither do I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think I think you could make any relationship work if you choose to, um, especially with space in your own, like, mm. you know, mm. people are like, yeah, I can do anything without a partner. And mm-hmm. like, yes, you can. Like, I don't want to diminish the fact that you're like powerful alone, mm. but there is something really powerful in figuring out how to make things work. I agree. You know who's getting married at the highest level right now? Hmm. The rich people. Like yeah. the top 25%. Uh, yeah. Income earners, all again and married, all is staying married. You think that's a coincidence? That's why it, I keep for saying for a lot of people, it's a business move. It is a business move. You know, which is why I tell women, this is all business for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's why they call it your business. <laughs> oh shit! Ooh, I okay. Call, got did you see one. Barbie? I did. What did you think? Um, I thought it was good. Ooh. Oh yeah! Ooh. Oh, oh yeah! It's, it's go time. Ooh. Fuck. Um, I thought it was good. I thought it 
was on the nose how it you know the the way it was expected mm, okay you know you, it, i agree it wasn't subtle in its messaging it, it I, wasn't I, no. I, I liked the messaging but it yeah. wasn't subtle I no agree. it wasn't subtle but it wasn't meant to be okay you that's know. a good point yeah but I don't like to, I'm not one of those people that watches, whether it's stand up or movies, and tries to read into it too much. Mm. You know, I'm like looking at the artistic side of it too. And I was like, oh, they did a really good job of capturing Same. that this was happening in Barbie land. I, I was I, like, that's. I thought so too. Pretty As cool. a guy, though, I will say it was some slight profound moments that I just never knew from mm-hmm. a woman's perspective. I, I was uh, I was uh, went to um, to the movie on a date with with a, with a date and my friend mm-hmm. right so it made him third will so it was a point where uh, Ken makes a joke about like playing the guitar he's like you want to come in so I can play the guitar at you for forty five minutes and yeah. my date pees herself and all the women in the theater are laughing and I laugh too because <laughs> I think it's kind of funny but I just thought it was like funny like surface level but then I heard all the women really laugh I go holy shit how many times has a guy done that to y'all yeah. There's, and I didn't. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I never played the guitar. I'm learning now, and I have to be honest with you. It is to play it at women. But I thought that's what y'all wanted. I didn't know that's not what y'all wanted. I thought y'all wanted to be playing that. I didn't know. So I was like, well, let me let me not play at women. Let me play two. Oh, is that the key? What's the message? Is yeah, it- I mean, I think if it's you know, because like Jake plays, but he doesn't play at home a ton. But sometimes I really like him too. Like, mm. I'm like, oh, I thought fuck. ladies like music. Yeah, fuck around and play. You know, it's, it's great. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, I've definitely been in the rooms where <laughs> you yeah. be at a party and then like somebody comes in and they're like, I sing. And then they sing with the person playing guitar. Mm. And like, they're like making this whole band of songs you don't want to hear because it's like the five and they know how to the play. the center of attention. <laughs> yeah. Which I, which I, yeah. We've all been there, you know, but. No, nobody plays the guitar at me. <laughs> I would like You've never that, been though. through that? No, no. <laughs> I want somebody to play the guitar at me. Do you think this generation is too picky? Maybe. Um, Which is something I've said on dates, and it's not what you should say. <laughs> I tell you <laughs> now. I've, I've said this a couple times, and God knows I keep losing. That's why I lose them at, believe it or not. I go, you know what the problem is? You women are just too picky, and they apparently don't like that. They, they don't? I, I think we want men to be picky, but we want them to be picky and think that we are that person they pick because mm. then we're like oh we're really special, special. Yeah. that's what women want to feel special I agree even if you're very self aware and you know that that's a thing that most women want mm. you also want to feel special mm. it's just how that's we're designed yeah. I mean you could say you don't care about feelings but you, you fucking do no no I, um, I, I want to be loved but, but men want that too yes. it's just not as like commonly laid out like I that agree. and I just say right now I want somebody to hold me Right? I why don't men get to be held? I agree. Why can't I be small spoon? I sometimes big spoon Jake because exactly. he likes that and it's really That's awkward so and funny. so hard to do because <laughs> he's so, so tall. Much than you. So I have to kind of go so like funny. with my whole body. So it's really uncomfortable and I'm just kind of smashing my face into his like this spinal bone. <laughs> I would, I would pay to see. I would pay to see that one because he's so much taller than you. He's so tall. He's oh, six shit. four. Oh man. Yeah, it's terrible, but yeah. he likes it. So yeah. sometimes it's just what yeah, you I do. Yeah, I want to be held <laughs> and then kissed on the neck, and then mm-hmm. you just rub my sphincter a little bit. I keep going. Well, and like I, as a woman, <laughs> just do a little rip job. Uh, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, See, and we like that too. Oh, no, look, See, we, we're all the same. <laughs> we're, we're all, all the same. The same. <laughs> How do you feel about eating ass? <laughs> you know, that ass game, man. Would I? Do I care if it's done to me? No, I mean, if that's what you want to uh, do, not at all. Uh, uh, of course, of but course. I'm not eating nobody's ass. I, I am. I respect that. I'm not. Just, no, dude. <laughs> even even if, you, even, you're in, even if you're in love? I don't think you need to do that to prove that you love somebody. No, I didn't say you have to you prove know? it. I'm just saying. I don't love somebody that much. I'd wipe their ass, like, if they were that's really, you know, if they were Honestly, that's hurt way. and needed that, like, yes. But Which, I don't need to eat it. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need to eat it. You eat it because you want. Eating ass is like drinking. You don't do it because you need it. You do it because you want it. Yeah. (laughs) Are we back to square one? So when I eat ass, I usually want to make sure I'm hanging out with friends. (laughs) And that it's not because I'm having a bad day. (laughs) Uh, uh, Shit. That's so funny.
<laughs> my grandma. Oh my god, my grandma. Did cocaine? She the, the, recently we took her to breakfast. I think it was was it her 80th birthday at IHOP, and she was telling this story really loudly about how she broke a man out of prison in the 70s. Maybe it was the 60s. Mm-hmm. And she told us what kind of car she was driving, and she pretended to be lost in the visitor's oh. section and drove, broke a man out of prison. And she was on the news and everything, but they, they, they couldn't find her because she was hiding from the police. And they never did, and then they questioned her, and she was like, yep, I, I was just visiting him, and I got lost, and she actually delivered him somewhere and got him out of prison. Um, really? Yeah, and she was That's telling this whole crazy. story at IHOP, but at the end of it, mm-hmm. she says... Cocaine is so great. <laughs> this is your grandma? At IHOP. And that was the first time I was like, Grandma, you did cocaine? And she was like, oh, it was so good back then. <laughs> everything's, everything's better back then. I take that yeah. for a fact. Yes. They didn't have like things mixed in with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was my first really awakening into the dabblings of my grandma. <laughs> you have to give up one. Okay. Drugs or good sex. These are hard. I know. <laughs> I know. I would give up drugs. Really? Mm-hmm. Though? Look at you. I would give up drugs. Good sex is like a drug. So. Especially when it's done right. Hey, yeah. Oh, okay. What do you say to people when they say women can't be funny and pretty? <laughs> I've gotten that my whole life. I know. Um, <clears throat> I usually don't respond to commentary like that. Okay. Depending on the mood, right? It's kind of like the same when you get a heckler. I agree. And you're like, I'm in the mood to like have fun with this person. And sometimes you're like, fuck this person, exactly. die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it depends on it, the day. It depends on that, yeah. Um, sometimes I like to be a little devil's advocate and be like, oh, so who are some of, do you know any female comments? You know, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I like to just ask them about what they do. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Turn it around on Women them. Women can't be funny and pretty. Oh, that's crazy. Do you still work at McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> so, are you smart and have money? Yeah. Um, do you have a? F- I don't know. I don't. Do you have good hygiene and? I, I, I always thought it was. Um, I don't know. I, I always thought it was like, it's just a way to try to. It's just a way to try to keep women down. I just never agree because some of the funniest people to me. All right, women. I'm not even trying to like. Be, yeah. I'm not trying to say. It. I'm just. Th- that is the case. Like a lot of my f- uh, f- uh, aunties and female cousins are stupid funny. Yeah. They are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. They're very funny. I think. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. Like, think of who you know as famous comics. Like, uh, most of them are attractive people. Yeah, mm-hmm. You know, I like agree. where did that mentality ever come from? I you agree. have to be some like swamp goblin to, I agree. <laughs> to also, be funny. Also, you know what I'm saying? You, know, I, you, you, you try to speed past it, but I think I'll take the compliment. I am a pretty good looking guy. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Also. You know, just say it into the camera so they can so they can believe you. St. James is a very, very attractive man. You can pay me the $100 after this episode. Fuck, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, oh, so fuck. bad. Is it my turn? I think, it is. I think it is yours. Fuck. Oh, I don't know, actually. I is think it? it's your is it turn. Mine? Yes. Okay, shit. God damn it, right? <laughs> you just know the ones to pick, huh? Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, <sighs> God damn it. Good Lord. Okay. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'm saying I got soft hands. Okay. What can I say? <laughs> What, you use in Nivea? Uh, uh, Vaseline. All right. Um. <laughs> uh, how much toxicity do you allow, do you allow in your relationship? <clears throat> um, that's a good question. That's I was, what I do. I was in a really toxic relationship. My first one, he actually died. <laughs> it was so toxic you killed the guy that's a, how toxic was your relationship i killed my last boyfriend so bad oh my god i'm so sorry uh, okay he, it was way later so it, he was it was a really way uh, later after was, you killed the guy <laughs> could you imagine if this was my confession uh, like so on up and up you gotta hear so, first no but crazy thing so i dated this guy when i was in my early 20s in chicago i met him he was homeless on an island i brought him home with me and he lived in chicago with me for like a year and a half wow we had a terrible relationship he was physically abusive 
um, uh, Chris Z, who works at Laugh Factory, lived mm. sound. Mm. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. He lived in our building, and mm. he was like 16 or 17 at the time. So he saw a lot of stuff. So when I saw him, like, years later on the comedy circuit, he was like, oh, I'm so glad you're happy. It was right after I'd gotten engaged in my last relationship. He was like, I'm so glad you're happy. The other relationship was a piece of shit. Well, I think it was last year I found out that he passed. He had tried to call me a bunch of times over my last relationship to apologize, mm. but I picked up once and I was like, it's all good, man. Yeah. Like, but it's, yeah. you know, I, I think he was in some sort of program. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, he passed last year. And oh. then my last relationship, my ex fiance, we were together for nine years and there was no toxicity. Um, then we broke up and he married my ex best friend. <laughs> Jesus. So I think Do you I think have, that happened while y'all was talking or was it a I coincidence? Don't, I, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. It I doesn't agree. even matter. The relationship's over, so I dwell on what could have been. Um, but so I feel like I allow a lot of stuff. Mm. I think I allow more than necessary as mm. far as toxicity. Um, oh. Ah, it's going, it's going, it's going. Ah. <laughs> it was perfect to tumble the tower on toxicity. Yeah, fuck it. Ugh. But yeah, man, I try down. not to. I try to, you know, keep myself sturdy. I respect that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Natasha, last question. Okay. <clears throat> it's not a trick question. Answer however you please. But in your opinion, what is the key to life? There's a few that I kind of go off of. I like to think that everything you do, do it very well. Mm -hmm. Because if you always have that intent of doing whatever you're doing, even if it's not your favorite thing, as if it is, mm -hmm. it kind of penetrates through other things that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you start leaving people better than you found them, mm -hmm. or you speak about people differently, or you carry yourself differently in certain rooms, or when people aren't around, you say things about them that uplift them. Mm -hmm. You start to, I think that's a really big key. That's beautiful. And because you get your fulfillment and your mm -hmm. happiness out hey, of putting out, out good people. stuff. Mm -hmm. Boom. All right, well, Natasha... That was the podcast. Yeah. That Thanks was for fun. doing it. That was really cool. I, I, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you had a good time. Would you come back? Hell yeah. I would in a heartbeat. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's the show. We'll do mushrooms on the next one. I'm doing mushrooms <laughs> next time. Deuces.